Hi, I'm Tony Gagnon with the Tuning School. This Tech Tuesday, we're going to be talking about variable cam timing, what it is, and why you want to tune it. Explaining the variable cam timing is really simple. We are able to move the camshafts. Whether we're using two cams or one cam, we're able to move the cam with the variable cam timing controls. In the old school days, we had one single cam. This one single cam right here had a preset RPM band, whether it was designed at, and that's where it was ground at, and that's where we installed it at, and that's where we used it at. Whether it was 2,000 to 5,000 or 3,000 to 7,000 RPM, we could not change it. Enter variable cam timing. With well, variable cam timing, we're allowed to move the cam, either retard it or advance it. With TIVCT, we have full control. With two cams per cylinder, we have intake and exhaust cams, we can actually create the overlap to move the RPM band from 2,000 to 5,000 to 2,000 to 8,000. That's the advantage of variable cam timing. So there's three major parts of variable cam timing. The first one is the spring. The spring is actually what moves the camshaft. The phaser allows the camshaft to move and the oil pressure allows the phaser to move. The phaser on the bottom there, as you can see, you have adjustments from side to side as it goes up and down. That's all limited by the spring pressure and the oil pressure. In approximately 1999, 2000, Ford realized they needed to improve upon the efficiency of the engines and the capabilities. So they started looking at being able to move the cams as well as control the throttle. That's where electronic throttle control came in, which with our variable cam timing, those two together allowed us to do some very interesting things. Many years ago, we used to drive around with a vacuum gauge, trying to make the best vacuum at 25 inches of vacuum to make our best power, or I should say our best efficiency. What we realized is that was a pumping loss. Variable cam timing allows us to move the cams back. Electronic throttle control with the variable cam timing allows us to run as close to zero vacuum as we can, which reduces the pumping loss, which allows the variable cam timing to move up and down to make peak power. Whenever you change the airflow model of an engine, you need to check your variable cam timing and the controls. That's where the adjustment comes in. Let's say you put a cold air kit on, you put headers on a car. Obviously, the cold air kit's not that big a change for the variable cam timing, but the headers are. And one of the things that happens with a header is the header creates scavenging. If scavenging is helping you get exhaust flow out, obviously adjusting the camshaft on the exhaust side to help that is gonna give you more torque. Hence why we tell people when you start to tune a car, the variable cam timing is the finite adjustment for making peak power. You can clean up the little dips in your, your power band and your torque band by moving those intake and exhaust cams. TIVCT, the twin independent variable cam timing, allows us to do that. So I get the phone calls every day. <clears throat> I wanna lock out my cams. Well, if you do lock out your cams, you lose the TIVCT control. You're gonna lose your bottom end torque or you're gonna lose your top end depending on where you lock the cam out. The only reason you would lock out a camshaft on a TIVCT engine was if you had a specific power band that you're going to use or you're requiring a spring pressure that will overcome your VCT controls. If that's the case, you have to determine what side of the cam you want to go on. Obviously, you're going to modify the cam angle to increase the most horsepower. So the VCTs allows power to be made throughout the power band, but there's also some other things that come with it. We can increase our miles per gallon. We can increase our torque on the bottom end we can increase our horsepower in the top end. All of those used together can also help us reduce emissions. Keeping the emissions reduced is another priority concern of ours as well. What Ford did with the TIVCT was take VTEC and put it on steroids. That gave us power from the idle to 8,500 RPM and everywhere in between. It also gave us its controls to move in certain points, depending on the intake you put in there, depending on the camshafts. We have full control to help our torque, help our horsepower, our miles per gallon, and our emissions. With that being said, it's not easy. If you want to learn more about this, check out our books. We go through the whole thing step by step. I hope this helps explain why variable cam timing can help your tune improve. Thanks so much for watching this episode of Tech Tuesday. Make sure to follow us on social media for more high performance tuning knowledge. Until then, stay tuned. Thanks so much for watching. Watch. That's me that time. Basically, we are allowed to move the camshafts. Sorry, there's a bug keeps flying in my face. <laughs> I'll just eat it and we're done.